Hello and welcome to Really Big Chapel here at St. Andrew's Episcopal School. Today is a very special chapel service because it's the day when we celebrate an important day in the life of the church we call Palm Sunday. We'll hear the reading about Palm Sunday in just a few minutes. And as we listen to it, we're reminded of Jesus' return to Jerusalem when people were so excited at his arrival that they cut palm branches and laid them in the road, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna means save us. And we'll hear about the joy of the crowd at Jesus' arrival and how quickly things begin to change in the days to come. So let us now enter into this service with joy and thanksgiving as we too cry, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of your tender love towards mankind has sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please, Please join with me in saying the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The pastor of our Lord Jesus Christ is when we stand up. One of the twelve, who is called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the unloving bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where do you want us to make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hands into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written with him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. 
It would have had been better if that one would not be born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to all of them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with, drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd of Galilee, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. After I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with them Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay away from me. And going a little farther, he drew himself to the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Let not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them all sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour that hand and the Son of Man is betrayed to the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, and from, from the chief priests and elders of people. Now the betrayer had given up a sign, and said, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how will the scripture be fulfilled, which, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, have you, come with, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I was a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching you not arrest me, but all of this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then, all the disciples placed there between the throne. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Capitus, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following them at a distance. And for as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they were put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward at last, two came forward and said, This brother of 
fellow said, I am able, able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, How do you know answer? What is it, what is it that they couldn't find it? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said, How could you honor us before the living God? Tell us if we are the Messiah. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming onto the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and took and some slapped him, saying, Call the Messiah, who is it that is you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courthouse. A servant girl came up to him and said, You all serve the Lord Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystander, This man was with Jesus the Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystander came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and swore no. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, he was denied him three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When the morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned that I've tried against his blood. But they said, what is that to us? See it to yourself. Writing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, but the chief priest taking the pieces of silver said, It is not lawful to put them in the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury a furnace, for, the, for this reason that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was filled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one of whom a price had been set, of whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the price of and the Lord commanded. Now Jesus stood, stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, any whom they wanted. At the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barone. So, after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over while he was sitting on the judgment seat his wife's sent word to him. I have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of the dream of God. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them,
Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shall help him. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See it to yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered while the whole tore around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him off the robe and disowned him. The then they led him away to the town. As they went out, they came upon a man from Syria, named Simon. They can help this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with ground. But he ta when he tasted it, it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then, they sat down there to keep watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by the derated him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, you see speak also, along with the scribes who know this, remarking him, saying, He saved others. He did not save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. If he trusts in God, let God deliver him now. If he wants for it to be said, I am God's son. The two bandits who were crucified with him also taught him from the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got his punch, stood it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to them. Now, when Centurion and those with them who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquakes and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also looking on the distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and his arrival. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the son of the One of his evening, there came a rich man from nowhere in Nathan, named Joseph, who was also a son of When he went to the pilot and asked for the body for him, then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Jesus took the body and wrapped it in the same little cloth and laid it on the tomb of Jesus, which had been to him in the water. 
He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and the Lord. Mary Magdalene and the other men went up to the top of the tomb. The next day, after the day of the preparation, the chief priests came, the chief priests and the Pharisees were gathered before the house of the Sir, you remember what that apostle said while he was still alive. After three days, I will, I will rise again. Therefore, the man is going to be prepared until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and still have a way and tell the people he has been raised in the dead. And the last reception of the will be worse than two. Finally, said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it secure, it secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray for God's people around the world. We pray for our bishops, Michael and Brian. We pray for our school chaplains, Annie and Haley. We give thanks for our school community. We pray for our world. We pray for justice, peace, and safety. We pray for our pets and animals. We give thanks for all the blessings in life. We pray for all who work in our hospitals and the healthcare professionals in our community, especially Nurse Anna and Nurse Jessica. We pray for those who need God's help, for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the homeless, and all who are treated unfairly. We pray especially for Glenn, Rob, Danny, Mary Grace, the Murphy family, Roger, and Lynn. A child prays for her aunt. Another child prays for great times because the world needs them. We give thanks for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for our families, for our parents, sisters, and brothers, especially a student's little brother, Bear. We give thanks for the women in our lives as we celebrate Women's History Month. We give thanks for our Asian and Asian American communities at St. Andrews. We also give thanks for the births of Dean Edward Brannon and Nolan Mars Cranford. We give thanks for all of our faculty and especially for our North Campus screener, Royce. In our school cycle of prayer, we give thanks for our advancement office. We pray for Bill and all who have died. We pray especially for the victims of violence and hatred in Atlanta and Boulder. Almighty and everlasting God, 
you love everything you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new hearts in this Lenten season. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And now our prayer for everyone celebrating a birthday this week. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them whenever they are sad or lonely or afraid. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes all of our understanding, abide all of the many days of their lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.